Hello there, my name is Ismos and welcome to part two of our Linear 2.A training series, uh, making a SOA tunnel. Uh, so let's begin on the modeling part of this and uh, we're going to start by modeling uh, this, the walls of uh, the SOA. And uh, if you look closely, uh, we have two different types of walls. Uh, we have uh, one with a manhole and another one without uh, a manhole. So as I said, I wanted to make this uh, in modules so that if I wanted to extend uh, these tunnels I can easily do that and uh, if you wanted to uh, rotate maybe make branch another tunnel here you just duplicate uh, this part here okay I think it takes two two sections so you just duplicate that and make sure I'm using I'm not using in video points rotate say you want to rotate this to have to, to have a another section that goes off out of that direction you can just start another chain uh, that goes on the other side so what I didn't make is a uh, is a junction a module that would go here but I think I'll do that off screen but uh, the steps are still the same maybe I'll do that in this tutorial uh, in this series uh, but uh, in the main project I didn't do that uh, so because I didn't have the idea that idea but uh, you can see you can extend this to as many parts as you want and uh, if you want to make it even easier easier for you, you just join it into one single uh, mesh and now you don't want you don't have to worry about selecting all the individual components of this mesh and uh, you can use you can apply an array onto this single uh, module and uh, extend it as much as you want in the direction you want. So this would be negative. Yes, zoom in a bit. So you would have to deal with a few issues here. Uh, so I think you would have to make sure that before you apply, before you join uh, the meshes, uh, that uh, there is no gap between here. Uh, so I think because I, I didn't select uh, the portion that would go here, so I'll delete that and uh, we can start so that we can start on modeling the tunnel. So the tunnel is very easy. Let me open up another Blender project here. Uh, so Control N, New. So the tunnel is just uh, a circle. Shift A. Let me turn on my screen keys so that you can follow along. Uh, push them to the right. Shift A, circle, rotate it to your direction and uh, scale it to any to the radius you want i'll just if you want to be precise you can precise you can use uh, the measure tool and measure uh, the distance or the or the, diam the diameter that you want it to be set uh, but uh, this is a simple tutorial and i don't want to complicate over complicate it complicate it with uh, uh, precision and what so this is going to be the radius the di uh, the uh, i said it's not the radius it's the diameter of our tunnel so i'll just you just go to edit mode and by hitting tab on your keyboard you can see the, the keys i'm using here and then hit e on your keyboard and then the direction of the axis you want to extrude to extrude uh, the tunnel in that direction so right now you see that uh, we have facets here uh, that are showing up so you can right click and then turn on small shading uh, but uh, you see that uh, if we start extruding our uh, different parts we're going to have a few shading issues like that so what i usually do is after i turn on a uh, small shading and i know I'm, I'm going to make some sharp extrusion i i always go to the i think it's called object data and under normals you can turn on auto smooth and uh, it will uh, shade uh, the round areas smooth and the sharp areas uh, sharp or flat so let me undo this because i don't need this so we already now have our, our, our tunnel our set. We just need to add texturing and UV mapping to get it to work. Uh, but uh, we lack. So as I said, we're going to make this in modules. Uh, so assume this is your module. And uh, if you want this to be easier for you, I uh, don't just scale it to a random value. Just uh, snap it to a grid so that it scales uh, from one grid to another. That way, if you want to attach another module on top of it it's easier for you to move and uh, you just snap it to the next grid there so just shift d then hold on control and then drag it until it snaps uh, to the other grid and uh, you can see that uh, that will help uh, so 
this is our tunnel uh, so we need to add other trench for our sewer and uh, the way i did it here uh, is that i didn't want to uh, waste a lot of polygons uh, so i deleted the bottom uh, vertices and uh, created the sewer the sewer tunnel without without the walls going around uh, the entire loop so that's what we are going to do and uh, let me go back here so let's go to first uh, to forward to front view uh, turn, uh, go to wireframe wireframe view so that we can select uh, these vertices and also make sure we select uh, the back vertices if you just select if you just try to select uh, with when you are in solid view like this uh, and uh, you select you will only be able to select uh, the front uh, the vertices that you, that are facing you or the vertices that uh, that you're looking at or that you're seeing in your view so make sure you go to wireframe you, which you can access up here or just hit Z and then uh, slide to the to the left uh, to see at uh, select wireframe. So I will select I think uh, this portion, and uh, I usually like to work in uh, a random color shading uh, so that I can easily identify the different uh, meshes that I have or objects that I have in my scene. So I'll go in here and uh, under viewport shading turn on random colors and I can also turn on cavity so that I can see I can see the sharp uh, edges on my mesh uh, then I want to separate this portion here uh, because this is going to be our sewer line uh, from these uh, sewer walls so I'll hit P to separate it and you can see because I have random colors turned on uh, I have I can easily see where that ends uh, where my sewer line would oh would be so as you can see in the example, it's not curved as well like that. It's just uh, a trench uh, where the sewer would flow. Uh, so, so I'll just select this edge and this and hit F to fill them into a face. Uh, but uh, we have these extra faces. Uh, again, I, won't, I don't want to waste uh, CPU. So I'll just delete uh, these bottom verses uh, because remember we're going to be using a lot of tunnels and uh, you want to be very sh careful with uh, how many the number of polygons you have in your scene otherwise it's going to slow down your machine quite significantly so now that we have our sewer line, line now let's make our trench so i'll just add a middle loop here i uh, using ctrl r and then beveling that loop uh, with ctrl b and moving my cursor to uh, to increase uh, the bevel width to to the length or to the width of our trench uh, so I think this would be good enough and then I can extrude it down I'll extrude the selection down until I have something that I like as a train that I like now we have these extra faces that we need to delete and now we have our sewer uh, but uh, this is too sharp and uh, it looks uh, like it will look like concrete a concrete sewer this is also a concrete sewer uh, but uh, because it's an old sewer you 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 assume you, you assume that uh, it has been a lot of er erosion has has occurred and uh, all these sharp corners has sta have started uh, kind of smoothening uh, because of the uh, friction and er erosion of the water so uh, let's smooth uh, these two edges uh, by beveling them out by using ctrl b and uh, use your middle mouse to increase uh, the number of polygons uh, for that now you can see that uh, this is a bit uh, more rounded and uh, we also need to do the same for these bottom parts and uh, we have that so this is not exactly how i did it in the original version and uh, i'm going to have the time lapse of modeling this exact thing at uh, the entire thing from start to, to finish on my second channel uh, because i want to keep this channel uh, to a uh, step-by-step explain a tutorial channel and uh, the other one will be strictly time-lapse videos uh, for things like this uh, that uh, yeah so you will see if you watch that time-lapse you'll see that I didn't do it this way I didn't do it exactly this way uh, because now I'm going to run into issues if I wanted to kind of give it because you can see this is still too artificial uh, erosion water erosion doesn't work like this it kind of starts digging through uh, when erosion happens it dig through walls so as you can see in this in this uh, in this scene here 
uh, the walls are being eroded in and also down like that. So if you try to do it uh, like this, it's still possible. You can turn on proportional editing, but you don't have, yeah, it's still possible. And I think it's still good enough, uh, but uh, I think it works. So I'll just use this.